This video demonstrates open repair of an Extent 2 thoracal domiotic aneurysm utilizing a multi-branch stag graft. Patient is a 17-year-old young man who suffered acute type B uncomplicated aortic dissection five months prior. He has a genetically associated thoracic aortic aneurysm that was confirmed PRKG1 mutation and on routine follow-up was found to have a complicated chronic aortic dissection with enlargement uh, of the aorta within three months. The CTA of the chest and abdomen reveals a chronic dissection with enlargement of the proximal descending thoracic aorta extending down to the celiac axis. Our strategy for organ protection includes distal aortic perfusion, moderate hypothermia, and cerebral spinal fluid drainage. Neuromonitoring is performed by a nerve physiologist and both motor evoke and somatosensory evoke potentials are obtained throughout the case. A cerebrospinal fluid drain is inserted by our cardiovascular anesthesiologist. The patient is positioned in a right lateral decubitus left side position up with the hips at 60 degrees and the chest at 90 degrees. The left groin is opened and the left common femoral artery is exposed. A modified thoracal abdominal incision was made down to the sixth intercostal spine. The latissimus dorsi and serratus are exposed. The diaphragm is preserved and the abdominal contents are rotated medially. The thoracal domiotic aneurysm is now exposed after the omni retractor is placed. The multi branch thoracal abdominal graph is now prepared, orienting the side branches. An additional 14 millimeter dacron graph is attached to the main body, which will allow reattachment of the intercostal arteries. The graft is now oriented so that the celiac graft lies at the level of the diaphragm. A reverse elephant trunk is now created in preparation for any needed procedures. The inferior pulmonary vein is now cannulated for distal aortic perfusion which takes blood to the left common femoral artery. A Fogarty padded clamp is then applied proximally distal of the left subclavian artery and sequential clamping is achieved by placing another clamp in the mid-descending thoracic aorta. The descending thoracic aorta is now opened and the chronic dissection exposed. Heavy silk stay sutures are applied to expose the uh, aneurysm. The inclusion technique is avoided by separating the proximal descending thoracic aorta from the esophagus. The proximal anastomosis is now performed using a running 3O polypropylene suture. After completion, the descending thoracic aorta is now opened and and intercostal arteries number 8 through 12 are occluded using balloon catheters. Motor evoke potentials did not change and thus attention was then turned toward the abdominal segment. The graft is delivered th through the hiatus of the preserved diaphragm and the branches are oriented appropriately. Renal perfusion is performed using balloon tip catheters with cold crystalloid and tepid blood is infused to the SMA and celiac axis. Without changes to the motor evoke potentials, the distal anastomosis is then completed to establish pelvic circulation. We believe this is important for spinal cord protection. 
the anastomosis is then completed and the graft de-aired, re-establishing flow to the pelvic circulation. Distal aortic perfusion will be continued to allow warming of the patient to 35 degrees Celsius. The grafts are then cut to the appropriate length and sequential anastomoses are then performed. In this case, the right renal artery is first reattached, then the left renal artery, followed by the superior mesenteric artery, and finally the celiac axis. Before completion of each anastomosis, the balloon tip catheters are removed and the grafts are adequately de-aired. This approach tries to minimize the actual ischemic time to each of the visceral and renal vessels. Although not depicted in this video, renal temperature is measured maintaining a temperature below 20 degrees Celsius. The 14 millimeter Dacron graft is now prepared for use to reattach the patent intercostal arteries T8 through T12. Even without changes in the motor voc potentials, we do believe that reattaching these intercostal arteries helps reduce the risk of delayed paraplegia. This anastomosis is performed in a bevel fashion using a 3-0 running polypropylene suture. Other configurations can be utilized, such as the loop graft to reattach intercostal arteries, but the end to side was selected for this case. The patient is then decannulated so as to be off distal aortic perfusion and anticoagulation reversed. Hemostasis is now confirmed throughout the entire repair. Before closure, we utilize cryoanalgesia by cryoablation of the intercostal nerves T4 through T10. And standard closure of the thoracal abdominal incision is performed with drainage tubes left in place. This depicts our paraplegia prevention protocol in the post-operative period. This depicts his intraoperative information. The patient awoke neurologically intact with good kidney function. He was discharged on post-up day number eight.